Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church's worship video. This Sunday is the eighth Sunday after Epiphany. In the church here, this is referred to as Transfiguration Sunday, taking its name from the Gospel text where Jesus, with Peter, James, and John, go to the mountaintop. Jesus prays and Jesus is transfigured. In addition to the text from Luke, we will also have a reading from Exodus, where Moses returned from Mount Tabor. Our music and sermon time will bring to the forefront encountering the holy and our radiance before God. Siblings in Christ, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, we are happy you are a part of this community, and you are welcome here. We gather with humble and joyful hearts to consider all God has done for us and in us. We gather to worship and give thanks and praise to loving God. God does indeed love us and care for us, and God draws us to each other and claims us as people of God. Knowing this, let us worship God. Let us pray. We come before you, O God, 
and wait for the kindling flame of your Holy Spirit calling us into fuller and richer lives. You have blessed us by night's rest and by morning's light. Open us to your claim on us. Show us your way. Let us live in the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I am sure I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes, I shall see the goodness of our God. Hold firm, trust in the Lord. I am sure I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes, I shall see the goodness of our God. Hold firm, trust in the Lord. Our text for today from Exodus picks up after Moses has just been in the presence of the Holy One, the Lord Almighty, on Mount Sinai. Moses and the Lord have been in conversation in which Moses has pleaded for mercy for the people he has brought out of Egypt, pleaded for their waywardness and sinful ways. Moses seeks, among other things, forgiveness, which the Lord grants. Moses has now just received the commandments on stone tablets, and these are to form the basis of the restored Covenant with the Lord. Exodus 34, verses 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron And all the Israelites saw Moses. The skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Here ends the reading. Our Gospel text for today is from Luke, chapter 9. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, The appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were Leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came came over and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. 
and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. Here ends the reading. Transform us as you transfigured, so the part on tables height, need us up our sacred mountains, search us with revealing light, lift us from where we Fallen, full of questions filled with fright. Transform us as you transfigured, one spoke with those holy ones. We surrounded by the witness of those saints whose work is done. Live in this world as your body, chosen daughters, chosen sons. Transform us as you transfigured would not stay within our shrine keep us from a great temptation time and truth we quickly bind lead us down those daily What does transfiguration mean to you? I first heard the word when I read Harry Potter. Transfiguration is a class that they take where they turn things into other things. But is that what's going on here? The disciples, James and John, in our reading from the gospel certainly think that it is. They see Jesus take on a beautiful divine form and they think that he's been transformed. But recently, Pastor Ray reminded me, and I wanted to pass this on to you, that what's happening in the Bible isn't transfiguration the way it happens in, say, Harry Potter. We're not turning a porcupine into a pincushion. That happens in other places in the Bible. Well, not the porcupine pincushion thing, but things transforming. But Jesus, no, it's more like something deeper is revealed, or he became what he was meant to be. When we talk about transfiguration in Sunday school, we often use butterflies. They start out as caterpillars, but they metamorphosize into something beautiful, something that they always were, but that is revealed. Maybe I just like butterflies, but I do like that image, that truth, that purpose being revealed. So I guess the question that I have for you is, do you think that you're being transfigured? What are you becoming? What truth about you is being revealed? One of the great things about being a kid is having your future ahead of you, figuring out what you're going to be. What about the church? Are we being transfigured as a group? What do you think we're transforming into, transfiguring into? Think about it and talk about it with a parent or sibling and I look forward to talking to you about it next time I see you. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to open with a question that I will come around to answering later in the sermon. What do you see when you look at a rainbow? And a follow-up question you, you probably have, of course, is what does the rainbow have to do with our text for this morning? Our first reading was from the from the book of Exodus, and 
Moses returning from Mount Sinai, not the story of Noah's Ark. As we look around, as you look around the, in your environment, our eyes see the world around us. If we fix our eyes on a particular object, and if we describe the physical properties of the object, we may use words to describe its shape, its color, its size or form or composition, its structure. Your eyes are able to do this because of light. The light that fills the room is refracted, absorbed by things, and reflect, reflected off other things, like the object and the things around that object that you may be looking at. Our eyes work because of light. Without it, we lose our sense of sight. Energy in the form of light enables us to see. Our eyes see in what is referred to as the visible spectrum, the visible spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum. You may remember this from your science days in school. The electromagnetic spectrum includes radio and microwaves and infrared and visible ultraviolet x-rays, gamma rays. The part of our eyes are able to pick up is only a small portion of that electromagnetic spectrum. Here again, I don't want to go into too much science, but the point I am trying to make is that our eyes only are tuned only pick up energy in a small portion of the overall electromagnetic spectrum. Each color we see is a slightly different wavelength on the visible portion of the spectrum. Other animals have eyes that are tuned slightly different, enabling them to see better in low light situations or in shades of gray or with different resolution. But animals' eyes are all mostly limited to a small portion of the spectrum as well. Humans, humans see because light energy breaks open into different colors of this visible spectrum. We discern not only color, but shapes and sizes and form of objects. God created light first, because without the light, the rest of creation would have no definition or vibrancy. Here again, we humans only see a small portion of the light God made. But at the same time, most perceive that what we see exists and only what we exist. In other words, out of sight, out of mind. Does that sound familiar? Jesus counters. Jesus negates this assumption of out of sight, out of mind. When he ascends the mountain with James and John and Peter, Jesus, in the moment of transfiguration, does not change shape and size, but he changes the disciples' perception of his appearance. The disciples see Jesus as God sees Jesus, a dazzling white light. Jesus gives them the gift of seeing him as God sees him. Instead of Jesus reflecting blues and greens, reds and yellows, Jesus reflects God and shows himself to be luminous. When the eyes of the disciples are open, when by the grace of God the disciples' eyes are open, they see another person, one who had a similar encounter centuries before on another mountain. In Exodus, Moses comes down from Mount Sinai after talking with God, and he is aglow, yet he has no idea he is shining. The Israelites and his brother Aaron have fear and trembling. They are afraid to get near him because of his dazzling appearance. When we read the other parts of Exodus, we come to learn that Moses is tucked away in the cleft of a rock and that he only saw God's back. You shall see my back, but not my face shall be seen from Exodus chapter 33. So Moses is not shining because he saw God on the mountain. Moses shines because God saw him. Moses and Jesus from our two stories today show us that God sees us, not through the limited visual spectrum like human see, like that one sees when looking at the rainbow, but through shimmering expanse of the whole glorious spectrum. 
and God sees us beyond the spectrum into who we are deep down inside. We see each other in blues, greens, reds, and yellows because we reflect and absorb various quantities of white light. And once in a while, when we look at each other, we get a glimpse of something a little deeper. But God made us so that we can do much more. God made us to shine with radiance. Well, over the years, sometimes our luster and brilliance might have faded. Our once energetic, vibrant self, our glow has maybe dimmed a little. When we have not managed, for example, not managed resources, when we have been entrusted for the good of all, when we have, well, when we have not used our gifts for the common good, we have maybe have pulled back from our neighbor in need when we grime over our radiance. When we pull back from engaging, when we focus on self, whereby we turn in on self, absorption, we develop a film over our radiance. It's not quite as bright. The world will tell us that our radiance is measured. Our radiance comes from the things, the things we purchase, maybe precious stones, shiny metal. In other words, the world says, surround yourself in shiny things and shine. Ah, but that is not God's plan for us. We are the object. We are the things which are to shine, not the material stuff around us. We forget that we are the ones to shine, but God does not forget. God sees through the layers of stuff we pile on and the layers of grime and soot that may have collected on our shiny surface. God sees us shining. God knows our tendency to burn our radiance with dust and grime in a facade. God offers. God offers us a gift of transfigured eyes in order that we may see with new eyes, that we may see as God sees us. When we see our brilliance dim, we can look at our lives, take a serious look at the grime and soot, and we have accumulated and start stripping it away. Remove it. With God's help, only with God's help, we, we can become radiant once again. Hallelujah. We do not remain or have to remain a dimming human being. Siblings in Christ, God made us to shine like Moses and Jesus shone. And though we may not always shine brightly, God, gracious and loving God, sees us as we are and loves us through our radiance and when the dust dims our glow, today, tomorrow, and all our days to come. Amen.
God of all people. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, when we remember the revealed truth of your Son, Jesus Christ, as it was shown to the disciples James and John. Today, many of us are searching for that revealed truth within ourselves. In a time that is so often defined by uncertainty and fear, show us the truth of who we really are. Show us what we are becoming through Christ and the beloved community, and show us how beautiful those things are. Because many of us could use some more revealed beauty in our life right now. Hear are our prayers as we raise them up. Prayers for refugees, immigrants, and the displaced. Prayers for leaders, governors, and presidents. Prayers for first responders and those who risk their own lives to save the lives of others. These are petitions that we speak every week. But this week, as the world watches a conflict begin to unfold in Ukraine, they feel especially needed. Please, O oh Lord, let your love be felt especially by those who suffer from that conflict and by those whose decisions will affect the lives of others. Bless us here at home as well, in this community, in this city, and in this nation, where many suffer, grieve, or don't know what comes next. Grant healing to the sick, and succor to the afflicted, and help us to always remember, as we look forward to the season of Lent, that Lent is all about looking forward to your Easter promise, and that it is always darkest before the dawn. Hear these prayers, and the prayers that we lift up now for those members of our Hillcrest community who require a special prayer, for Isabel, Kathleen, Larry, James, Ray, Kathy, and Jim, for Ron on his passing, and Harriet, his wife, and all those who mourn and grieve. And hear now the petitions that we lift up, speaking them aloud or holding them in our hearts. Join together with us now, O Lord, as we speak those words that Christ taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are all called by God from the mountaintop to open to the divine within us, to be still and allow the Spirit to guide us to be our best selves. Thank you for your continued support of Hillcrest's mission through its programs to serve our church family, the wider community, and the world. Mm -hmm. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious Mother, Father God, we come to you for guidance as we strive to access the parts of ourselves that are closest to you. Be with us as we seek the divine light within us and help us to see the divine in all of your creation. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, bless Spirit, place, set our hearts on. Shining, Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Please, Spirit, please. Set our hearts on. receive the blessing. Holy Spirit, bless us as you send us out into the world to do the work you have given us to do. This Sunday of Transfiguration, transfigure us who are the body of Christ. Make our purpose revealed and remind us of your imminent presence. Heal us and make us healers. Comfort us and make us comforters. Give us justice and make us workers for justice. Amen.
And now, please turn to one another, either anyone who is in your physical space, or reach out to the broader Christian community across the world. And we will participate in that ancient custom of passing the peace. We greet one another in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be with you. And then we respond, and also with you. Please now pass the peace. The service is now ended. If you are joining us on Sunday, February 27th, 2022, you are welcome to join us for our fellowship hour. We're back in person, meeting in the physical world. So if you would like to come by the church, we would love to see you in person. And if you would not, if you are unable to or just don't want to, we do also offer the option of connecting to our in-person fellowship through Zoom. I get to carry you around in a computer, a laptop computer, and everyone else gets to talk to you in a little box. If you would like us to set up a Zoom appointment with you to join us for fellowship, or if you just want to talk or have any other questions or concerns, you may reach out to me at my email, L-O-K-I-X-O-C at gmail.com, or you may call me. Please, this week, do not use the office phone extension, as we might have some technical difficulties. Just to be safe, please call me on my cell, area code 310-302-7640. Today is, as many of you know, the last Sunday before Lent, and you know what that means. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and I hope to see many of you there. Blessings, and may the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you.